hi there buddy and uh, welcome to another video um, on today's video I have this uh, VW um, Touran this is a 1.4 petrol TSI um, automatic and uh, I'm gonna be changing the transmission fluid and the filter in it um, I think these days it's recommended to change that fluid with a filter every 40,000 miles um, or I think that'll be for the DSG gearbox, the other gearboxes, maybe 50,000 miles, something like that. But um, I am concentrating on this one. This is a 2008, I think. I may have said that, maybe not. But um, it's quite an older model now. Uh, this car is done around 60,000 miles now, so it's definitely due that change. Um, it's not very, it's not something that everyone is aware of uh, that these uh, transmission fluid and filter changes are quite a routine thing nowadays um, i've been doing a lot of uh, transmission fluid changes on a lot of cars now um, well mainly vw and audi not so much mercedes or or bmws but um, mainly this and also nissan's hondas Toyotas, that kind of cars. Anyway, um, I've got a kit here. This kit from Febby for this um, model um, for VW and Audi. That's the part number there. They show in there. 02E 305051CS1. But um, if you're gonna get a kit, make sure you get the correct kit and the correct transmission fluid for your vehicle it might be your vehicle slightly different engine or you might have a diesel version or whatever and those things can uh, change the kind of kit that you get so um, don't just go by that part number and if you order that it might be the completely wrong set for your vehicle so as i gave you the details of this car it's a petrol 1.4 tsi 2008 and so on um, this here it's the the filter we're gonna change and they also supply you with a new um, transmission sump plug nut bolt there uh, that is quite a big size for that you're gonna need something like I think that may fit 10 mil Allen no I was wrong it's not a 10 mil even bigger than that <laughs> so i'll have to look see what i've got but um anyway um it's not the hardest one to do to be honest uh, but we need to remove the battery in order to get access to the filter which is sitting just below the battery so i'm going to remove the battery i don't think i need to remove the rest of this stuff we'll have a look at uh the space that we have once the battery is out and then we're gonna get the car up and drain the oil so the method i'm going to use for refilling the oil is i'm going to measure how much oil comes out and uh, give and take i'm going to put in the same amount um, of give and take a few mils um, the other method of putting oil is by measuring uh, there is like a little measuring stick inside of the gearbox which we're gonna have a look um, and then as far as I know you have to run the car get it to a certain temperature get the transmission fluid to a certain temperature and while you measure that then that temperature then you um, you would see oil coming out of um, the transmission of, of that little measuring stick that is in the transmission and at that point then you put the plug back on um, that's how technically it's done but uh, in a non-technical way you measure how much how much it comes out and then you put that back in um, having said that um, so for refilling purposes also um, you might need a kit like this um because well i actually took the one that sort of 
is the same size as that. So you put that into the fill hole and then uh, you pump the fluid in or you you would have to I think there's a way of filling the fluid via the um, oil filter hole so once you remove the oil filter there is a hole in there and then you can fill in the the fluid via that way um, I, I did do it in another uh, VW in a Golf Plus where uh, but it takes a long time where where I filled it in through that through the filter area but it does take a while and if you're doing it outside <laughs> luckily today I'm indoors but that time I did it outside it started raining and a bit of a nightmare so make sure also if you're going to do it outside you plan for a sunny day <laughs> um, although in England that's a bit difficult but uh, it can be done right so let's get on with this Removing this battery. So first I'm going to just disconnect the terminals here. I'm going to disconnect the negative first. And uh, another thing is just make sure if you have a radio that has a code, make sure you have the code for it before you disconnect the battery. Um, because you're going to, obviously, once you disconnect it, you're going to lose your code. So, just one thing to remember there. This particular one doesn't actually have a, the original VW radio, so it doesn't really matter. Right, so once we disconnect, so I disconnected the negative first, which is the one back here. And then, I think there is a 13 mil bolt on the side of the battery just going down here which we need to remove Thirteen mil volt is just uh, holding the clamp that holds the battery in place. Just want to remove the battery and see how much we're gonna need to remove or not remove. Batteries are heavy, so just be careful with your back. And okay, the filter might be able to access it without having to remove anything else, really. It's just sitting there. So that's where the filter is. Um, I'm gonna see if I can access it. Okay, so just for the purpose of showing you that there is a 24 mil socket and that fits on top of the, uh, the filter there um, and we can access it so there's no issues we, we don't need to remove anything else so I won't be opening the filter just yet I am going to get the car up and drain the fluid first and if you're working on axle stands with a jack and whatnot, just make sure you uh, obviously safely uh, get your car on the axle stands because you're gonna have to go under the car. Um, uh, today I'm as few day many times now. <laughs> I've been lucky enough to get the the ramp, uh, use the ramp here so I can get the car up and uh, do the things a little bit easier from underneath. So. There's lots of videos or information or your manual telling you where you can fit your axle stands. Um, so be safe if you're doing it that way. Um, anyway, let's get the car up now. So looking at the car from underneath, um, 
we have this cover here we have the sump for the engine here and we have the transmission on this side and uh, we're going to remove it remove this here which I, I found out is actually a 14 mil allen so we're gonna open that and then drain the oil if you're gonna measure it then make sure you have uh, you're prepared for catching the oil okay uh, an empty can here which I'm going to use for measuring the amount I got a funnel on it that's my can there Also I'm flying. Right, um, so let's crack this open. As I said, I have a 14 mil um, Allen here. Okay, so put that open. Now we can take it out and try and catch the oil. <laughs> I did warm up the engine uh, before doing this. So inside of there, there's another Allen key type of um, socket. Well, not socket, but um, that measuring stick I was talking about. Just wanna see what size it is. Okay, so the one in there Looks like it's a size eight. Because I tried a nine, 10, no, no, it doesn't fit. <laughs> so definitely the eight. And as you can see, that thing there is the measuring stick. So when, when the transmission, when you put oil in there, and then you heat up the, the, well, you run the engine, transmission fluid gets hot, it expands, expands up to a level. Um, while you measure the temperature, the specific temperature that they give you, um, say 40 degrees C, then that fluid will expand and it will start going into this little hole so if it was down here it will expand it will start going into this little hole and it's going to start dripping uh, a little bit and that way you would know you have the correct level however um, if it was expanding and it was dripping quite a lot you would want you would want it uh, to leave it dripping until you see a small amount dripping something like this maybe but if it was a lot more than that then obviously you want to let it go down a bit until it's dripping like this and that would be again that would be at the, at the level that you need to be um, but you need to do that with uh, diagnostics equipment so you can measure the temperature of the, the oil uh, so like I said I'm not doing that I'm just measuring the fluid that comes out of there and I'm gonna fit same amount Okay, while this is draining, just gonna let it drain. Um, I am going to lower the car and uh, remove the filter from the top. It's just draining onto my container there. So far I can see almost four and a half liters that come out of there. So, well, let's get it down now. Okay, that's the filter there. Uh, that wasn't really tight at all. To be honest, the uh, the fluid that came out was fairly clean. So I wonder if somebody changed this already. <laughs> anyway, since I don't know, it's better if it gets done than not done. And at least I know for sure that it has been done.
So I'm just removing it slowly to allow any fluid that might be inside of the casing to flow down as well. Okay, that's the little house in there. And the filter is sitting right there. So just pull it out and take it out. You can see there is a bit of fluid in there, it remains. But um, in that center hole there is where um, last time I put my, my pipe. So the hole in the center here is where I connected my pipe to um, put the fluid in that way but it was really long so this time I'm gonna do it from the bottom with a pump okay so since the car is down here now um, there's a new filter there's the new o-ring and we just need to change the o-ring here with a new one and uh, I'm gonna put a little bit of grease around that o-ring when I change it and uh, our filter also has a little o-ring in there uh, but this we just push in into the housing there so let's go ahead and do that so I'm gonna prepare this and then get to it okay got my new filter I'm gonna get it in there push it in and got the cover here like I said I put a bit of grease around the new o-ring and we can get that in there first by hand as much as you can just make sure it's going in the correct way if you use your tool then you could damage the thread okay so that actually went in all the way by hand the way it came out it was almost like it was tightened by hand um, so just want to make just want to give it a little tad closing there like so and that's it it, it really seems like uh, it's one of those that you actually put in by hand. <laughs> so um, don't force it with your ratchet, otherwise you might damage it. Um, I mean, by all means, you can monitor for any leaks, but um, those uh, O-rings are very good at creating a seal around there. So so that's pretty much it, really. So with our filter and housing taken care of here, um, I'm gonna get the car up again and uh, see how much oil came out and then uh, start the refilling process. I will then fit the battery back in there. Okay, so just getting ready here. This is the pump I'm going to be using to pump the oil in. And uh, got this ready here. Just gonna put that in there. Hopefully it fits. Oh, no, actually, first I have to put in the filler back in, so don't forget to put that in there. So, when we remove this, it was hand tight, so just put it in there until it stops. So that's where it stops. Just finger tight. That's it. And uh, now we can try to fit this in. Right. 
Luckily, it does fit. It says there, by the way, ATF 106. Not sure if that helps, but um, get it in there. Just hand tight again. And I'm gonna get my hose connected to that in there. The sun has come out. Looks nice out there. Summer is getting a feel of summer here, um, which is nice. Uh, right, so um, that is ready there. I need to obviously plug that into, a, well, connect it to my battery there. And the other side will go into the uh, one of the cans. Now, looking at this, this has collected, to be quite precise, four and a half liters almost 4.6 so give and take I'm gonna put about 4.6 in there okay so I'm ready to start pumping in some oil um, obviously I'm gonna pump in around 4.7 or 4.8 because uh, once I finish um, by the time I remove this, I'm gonna be I'm gonna lose a little bit of oil. So, just trying to allow for how much I'm going to lose uh, when I remove this to replace with the new um, plug or bolt. So it's a good idea to be ready um, for when you're gonna do the change. I'm gonna show you just a little bit of how much I'm, how I'm pumping in, but uh, it goes really goes without saying. I'm gonna be pumping in four and a half liters, so um, no need to film all of that. pumping in the fluid and we'll see you once I finish okay so the pump has finished pumping in all the uh, all the oil and uh, I just keep it running for a few minutes there and I'm just gonna disconnect this pipe uh, so I can block that with my finger or I may actually disconnect this one no. whichever one is easier <laughs> And then I'm going to I just want to block this with my finger. And now I'm going to disconnect the pump. My pump used to have an on, on and off switch, but uh, I removed that. Okay, so now, since I have the amount that I want to have in there, um, and like I said, I pumped in a little bit extra for the amount that I'm going to probably lose when removing this and also give and take a little bit extra because my pump actually leaks a little bit as well so just taking all those things into account um, if I can just undo this I'm gonna try to do a quick swap here Once that is loose. And you can see what I mean by <laughs> losing some. So some 20 30 mils came out of there just like that 
So uh, we accounted for that and uh, and that's it basically. So now I'm gonna close this. So I'm just gonna clean up a little bit and then come back to it. Okay, so let's clean the area. Let's close this. So just using some brake cleaner there because um, that will clean the area really nicely and obviously if we have any leaks we'll be able to spot anything here and also just check the general condition underneath of your car there's absolutely no leaks on this one so if I get any oil dripping from from up there it could be from the filter if you know what I mean so if you keep things nice and clean then if you have a leak from somewhere then at least you're able to uh, source it a little bit easier so that is closed now um, don't over tighten that um, this wouldn't be shut more than 25 newton meters or so it's similar to this sun plug bolt here oops sorry here um, so if you have a torque wrench you can tighten that to I don't know, 25 newton meters or so it won't be more than that um, but anyway you can google that information uh, not really difficult to find and um, so now I'm going to lower the car start the engine and run it through the gears well first get the battery back in there okay so I'm just uh, fitting my battery here I already got it in there and I already have the <coughs> where's the other terminal actually um, already have the clamp in there so I am assuming that uh, if you got this far and you actually did change the gearbox oil on your car I will assume you can refit your battery so let's get this in here so again I fit um, positive side first and uh, then I'm fitting the negative here right so that is done everything is actually finished so the last thing last but not least is to get the car started and run the run it through the gear so I have the um, that light on and the anti-skid light come on that's because if you disconnect the battery that is going to happen but once you move the car a little bit it will actually um, disappear those things will disappear so anyway let's get this through we'll leave it a few seconds we just want the oil the new oil that we're fitting to go through the gears um, and you shouldn't really feel any rough changes any banging anything like that um, it's gonna be smooth changes so this is a DSG gearbox and uh, just gonna do that through reverse neutral drive and S there which I think is for sport mode I guess um, so we'll just put it through all of them a few seconds go back to P um, and then you could potentially uh, leave the car running 
check for any leaks anything obvious that might be leaking um, and then take the car for a for a spin right so right I'm not gonna go for a full drive but I'll just uh, reverse back here gonna show you how those lights go off by themselves just have to drive a little bit so hopefully it's gonna happen in the distance that I'm going to move because <laughs> we'll be moving too far here sometimes you need to go at a certain speed for those to go okay so there we are lights have disappeared so um, having said that having done that I hope the video helps don't forget to subscribe and um, We'll see you on the next video. Just uh, be careful when you do your transmission fluid. Uh, just a reminder here, um, anything you do to your vehicle or yourself, it's your own responsibility. So make sure you take the precautions so you don't damage anything because uh, damaging a transmission would be very expensive and injuring yourself would also be uh, tragic so do your research uh, maybe watch a few videos don't just watch one because everybody has different inputs and different uh, ideas uh, like I use an electric pump but other people use the, just a manual pump or in, in gravity feeding the oil or whatnot so there's lots of different ideas out there and every video every idea has a value so don't just watch one watch two or three and then you can tackle um, the job yourself so hope the video helps don't forget to subscribe we'll see you next video thank you for watching